A super common question that people always ask me is, what is the best calculus book? What is the best one that I should get? The problem is there are so many good calculus books out there and they all have different audiences. But it seems that when I look at the comments and it comes to calculus books, this is a book that comes up more than any other calculus book. So is this book perfect? Is it really the best calculus book out there? In this video, we're going to investigate. We're gonna see how good this book actually is. So this is not the book. So what is it doing here in this video? Well, this book was written by the same author that the book which I'm about to show you is based on. So this person here, George B. Thomas, wrote a book called Calculus. And I believe that the book I'm about to show you is based off of that book. However, it's not the same book. That's the weirdest thing. And I think, by the way, this book is awesome. It's absolutely incredible. I've done tons of the problems from this book. So I was really excited to finally get the other book. So this is the book that everyone's always talking about, Thomas Calculus. And this is the early transcendental version. And this is the 13th edition. So I wanted to make sure that I got a relatively newer edition because people were saying that the Thomas book, which is the one I reviewed before, um, had an upgrade and that this upgrade was significantly better. So I finally got a chance to look at this and let me tell you, I am super excited. Thomas Calculus, Early Transcendentals, 13th edition, based on the original work by George B. Thomas Jr., Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Yeah, very exciting. So this book has tons of information. I'm just going to slowly pan through all of the contents so you can see what this book contains. But basically this has everything you would learn if you were to take a Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3 course in college. Now, if your courses are in quarters, then typically you would also have a Calculus 4. So this covers everything you need for all of those courses, which is really amazing. I mean, this is a lot of mathematics. And it finishes with second order differential equations. And it comes with answers to the odd numbered exercises, which is really nice. I just wanna emphasize how thick this book is. I mean, look at that. That is a super thick book. And it's very comparable to the books by Stewart and the book by Larson, which I also have, and are also you know equally thick, perhaps a little bit thicker. Yeah, they're a little bit thicker than this one, but still quite thick uh, for this particular edition of Thomas Calculus. And this is not really an old book. Again, my copy is pretty new. I'm just gonna give it a whiff. It has that new book smell. So there is a new book smell that certain books have. And I just, yeah, it's just awesome. Here's a particular example where they're finding a limit and they're using Taylor series. I think this is a really cool example and I haven't seen an example like this in other books. So I think you find a lot of stuff in this book that you don't see in other textbooks. And I think that's really, really cool. Very similar to other modern calculus textbooks, this one also has answers to all of the odd numbered questions, which is especially useful if you are doing problems from the book for practice. And I really think that is a huge thing with this book. So there are tons of problems and I think that's a big thing with this book. A book like this is perfect for someone who is looking for exercises with answers. So even though you don't have answers to all of the problems, there are so many exercises in the sections that just the fact that you have answers to half of them is really enough to, to learn the material. So the big question is, is this a perfect book? Well, I think that answer really depends on who the audience is, right? There are all kinds of calculus books. There are calculus books that are written for people who don't know any trig. There are calculus books that are written for people who are going into engineering. And there are calculus books that are written for math majors. So. There's different types of books. So I think, in my opinion, this is a good book for everyone. And I say that because you're getting a lot of mathematics in one book. Again, this is enough content to cover three semesters of calculus. So you're getting a ton of math with a book like this, and you're getting tons of exercises with answers to half of them. So I think that alone, in my opinion, makes it a fantastic book. Here's a really nice, simple little illustration in the book. This is on the equation of a plane. So basically it's saying that a point, P naught, will land the plane uh, if and only if, if you take the dot product of this blue vector with this red vector and you get zero, because that would mean that they are perpendicular vectors. And that's what it says there. It says the standard equation for a plane in space is defined in terms of a vector normal to the plane. A point P lies in the plane through P naught normal to N, if and only if, and they give you the condition there. So really, really cool, 
simple picture that helps explain a concept. Here's another diagram in the section on partial derivatives, and this is presented in order to define the partial derivative of a function with respect to x, which they do down here. Should you buy this book? Well, I think a better question is, who is this book for? Who would benefit the most from a book like this? In my opinion, this book is pretty much for anyone who wants to learn calculus and wants to have a good calculus book. So if you want to you know, teach yourself calculus or at least try to, I think this is a good choice. If you are already taking calculus, I think it's also a good choice, even if you have another comparable book, um, like another modern textbook, like the ones by Stewart or Larson. So those are also very, very good books. Another reason to buy this book is also the practice problems, right? You get a lot of practice problems. So even though a lot of the concepts that are covered in this book are covered in other books, um, the concepts are explained in different ways sometimes, and you're getting different problems. So for me, I think that's kind of an interesting thing. Plus I collect books, so I just have so many books. So why not get another one? Here is an amazingly powerful, amazingly simple, amazingly useful technique. It's called tabular integration. So we have the integral of x squared times e to the x. And when you have something like this, when you have like x to a power, that means if you keep differentiating it, you're gonna get zero. So if one of the factors is eventually zero after repeated differentiation, like we have here, and if you can integrate the other factor, which is e to the x, then you can use this technique. So here, they just differentiate the x squared multiple times, and they integrate e to the x. And then you draw arrows, and you always start with the plus. Then you alternate the signs, plus, minus, plus. And then look, you just multiply, follow the arrows, x squared e to the x, and then minus 2x e to the x, plus 2 e to the x, plus c. Yep, I just checked it, looks correct. Super awesome, right? And not all books have this technique, and it's a really simple problem, but problems like this come up in other areas of math, and it just makes integrating so much faster. The other way to do this is to use integration by parts two times. These are the chapter five practice exercises. Look at this. This is completely insane. Look how many problems there are. Just tons, tons of problems. I mean, how many do we even have here? 114. 134 problems. That's in addition to like the individual section problems. So because I have so much experience teaching calculus, I tend to look at problems that perhaps other people don't look at so much. So like these problems here at the end, to me are especially a little bit more interesting because they're a little bit harder, they're a little bit more unique. It's just kind of fun. You can always find some like more interesting examples. Usually if you look like at the last few problems in a section. These are some of the exercises in the section on parametric curves. And I have to admit, I do like parametric curves. I don't think this is a very popular topic for a lot of people who take calculus, but I do think some of the problems are pretty cool. For example, the curve with parametric equations, x equals t, y equals one minus cosine t, and t is between zero and two pi, is called a sinusoid and is shown in the accompanying figure. Find the point x, y where the slope of the tangent line is largest and then smallest. That's really cool. So basically you have to maximize and minimize the derivative. It does have a section on conic sections as well, which I also actually like. I think conic sections are interesting because a lot of the really basic problems uh, surrounding ellipses and hyperbolas and parabolas and circles do require that you do some pretty deep thinking. You basically have to know, you know everything about uh, those particular conic sections, and then you use your information to answer the questions. And I just like that it requires a different type of thinking. Okay, so this is really crazy. Here is 4.8 antiderivatives, right? Now look at this, 64 problems. This is just a regular section. Okay, just a regular section in the book, not like review exercises or anything. Is it 119? Is it? Is it? No, it's 132 problems in that one section. I mean, that is just completely ridiculous. I think that's awesome. I want to thank everyone who mentioned this book because it's a great book. I'm really happy I bought it. And this book got a lot of attention when I reviewed this book, which is very similar. This one is Elements of Calculus and Analytic Geometry. And it's the same Thomas who wrote this book, but I'm pretty sure that this book is based off of another book by Thomas. That's my, my theory. I'm pretty sure that's right. But 
great book. They've done a wonderful job making it like more modern. Um, it's got tons of exercises. I think in books that um, you know teachers use to teach and stuff, it's really good to have lots of exercises so you have lots of selection. And most courses nowadays have online homework and what those do is they just take a subset of these problems and they put those in the online homework so you get even less problems. So that's why I think it's always good to have you know, the physical books. Um, and plus you have them forever, right? As long as you don't lose them or anything, um, you should have these books for the rest of your life. Yeah, really awesome. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck.